Hey guys, still there. Welcome to Stormworks. If you're watching this video, then there's a good chance that you're just getting started in Stormworks. Now, how the hell do you begin? Where do you start? And what do you do? That's what this video is going to be all about. It's part of a tutorial series that I'm doing on this game, so have a look in the description if you need more specific tutorials for challenges that you're facing. Now, this tutorial video specifically is about starting a new game, so that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to make it a survival game. I am going to allow first person and first person vehicle. I'm going to enable advanced vehicles, vehicle damage, player damage, NPC damage, sharks. I will not allow teleporting vehicles back to the workbench. This is too easy because at some point in advanced, you might have a vehicle that's capsized or out of control. And just teleporting it back would, in my opinion, take away a bit of the experience. I'm also going to remove fast travel. Again, this can be a bit of a cheat. So I'm going to turn that off. I will have permadeath off. I don't want to be immediately dying and I'll have limited fuel on. This means that vehicles will require fuel and this can be a bit of a headache, especially as you're testing vehicles. Hopefully this tutorial can make it as limited of a headache as possible. Now, World seed over here doesn't matter too much. This is just a um, map generation. And you can basically put down any number that you like over here. For the custom game or customized game mode, I'm going to go with the starter base. This is the one that you will usually start with if you're building in career mode. Now, let's have a look and see what we start out with. I'm currently on version 5.23, by the way. And there is a good chance that by the time that you're watching this video, we'll be on a version far later than that. And that is um, inevitable with a game like this. However, I think that the initial premise is much going to be the same. Okay, so you're starting in career. You just spawned in your little hut up on the hill. And the only workbench that you have, so the only place to create vehicles, is this one over here. This is the small shed. Now over here you see a crane. You can use that to lift vehicles out of the water if you so choose. We have a fueling depot over here with the large fuel tank out there to provide additional fuel to, I believe, helicopters and other aerial creations. But right now, you don't have the parts to build a helicopter anyway. Despite that, even if you wanted to, it's not really comfortable to do that in a shed like this. So we're going to be building a boat. Now there's an important distinction between building in basic or building in advanced, because in advanced, which is what I'm currently playing, you need to actually create all the piping to and from the engines. That's going to be part of this tutorial, so bear with me. Now this is the editor for your ships. In here, you can set up whatever vehicle you like as long as you can dream it up, pretty much. You're only limited by the parts that you have, and by these constraints. These are the editor sizes. A couple of tools on your right hand side. Symmetry, uh, section plane so you can look into the vehicle. Changing the camera angle. I currently have it set it to free mode, but usually it will start in orbit mode, which I do not recommend. Free mode is just far easier, as you can move around with WASD and hold right mouse button to just look around. The other buttons, you don't really need to concern yourself with too much. Just make sure that direction arrows is turned on. And you can see that by the orange bar right next to it. Or green. I don't know. I'm colorblind. Okay. So we have our ship. Or rather, our basic starting block. I'm going to turn on the symmetry mode and place this to X so that the ship gets mirrored over its central axis. Whatever I build on the left gets mirrored on the right. I'm going to go with a pretty simple flat ship because I don't have a lot of cash and I definitely do not have a lot of parts. Now we're going to go with a center axis and you can do this by dragging the ship or dragging the block. And this should be just about wide enough. Now this is the bottom of the boat. Now I want to start to go up on the sides, but I don't want those to be just the square blocks that you see over here. So, and I deleted that block by pressing Ctrl Z. That's a very nifty feature in the editor. You go with a wedge. 
and I rotate the wedge up, this is going to be the side. Next, set up another standard block. You can press 1 through 0 depending on what you have in your taskbar over here. So 1 is this block, 2 is the wedge, 3 is the pyramid, and 4 is the inverse pyramid. Again, rotate this block and we're going to set up another line. I'm going to do that a few times to have a pretty wide boat because it creates a nice stable platform and we are the Coast Guard. We don't really want this vehicle needing rescue. It's not going to win any beauty prizes, this boat. That's not the point. It's just there to get us going, to get started on missions. Now, in other games, you have to manually control or you have to manually design everything about your bow. Unfortunately, you don't have to do that in this game. What I can do in this game is have the, the editor help me build it. For that, I'm going to use the pyramid block and I'm going to have it set up like this. So you have the triangle sort of facing downwards. Click, drag it up, and now you already have what seems to be the shape of a bow. Next, remove that block, do it again. I don't really want to remove this block because if I would build here, it would turn into a bit of a weird contraption and it does work but you have to then manually remove this block. Now I want to make sure it's an actual bow, so I'm going to have a triangle or a wedge block over there, a pyramid, and we're going to continue this line upwards. So click and drag. Sometimes it works better than others. Again, click and drag. Now it might seem that this is uh, very easy and that you struggle when you're doing it yourself. It just comes with practice. It just comes with practice. Like any editor or any game where you build vehicles, you're going to be spending quite a bit of time in this and eventually it'll become almost second nature to you. All right, so that's the bow of my boat. Now I want to have this section covered up and add another triangle here. Not like that, there. Okay, set up this line, and that's pretty much the outline of my boat. Now, very important in Stormworks is that you have a watertight compartment, but I'm going to be getting that later, because first we're gonna to need to set up the engine. I'm gonna go with the most basic, simple engine that you can go with, and then we're gonna make it more complex. So, I want one propeller. This will not be a fast boat, but it'll work. One propeller down the center axis. You could go with two propellers, but you'd be making it a little bit more advanced and more complex. So for the moment, I'm just gonna go with one propeller. Now, this propeller takes power. This is the circle that you see over there. It says power and input. Receives power generated by an engine. So we're going to require an engine. Now, the only engine that you start with initially is the basic engine. This is a basic diesel engine and it is not very special, but it gets the job done. Now, if I want to build one of these, I want to make sure that I have it like this. This is the easiest way to have it. Unfortunately, the game won't let me place it down because it is supposed to be attached to a different point. That's what you see those nine blocks in front. So I'm going to set up a small line of nine blocks just as a holding measure. Then I'm going to set up the engine and attach it to that wall. And interestingly, now I can just remove the wall. And the engine is still holding steady. Over here, you have several outputs. This one in the rear is the engine output. So this engine power needs to go there. Then I have another couple of outputs. This thing outputs warm coolant. So this is where your, um, let's say the warm fluids coming out of the engine come out of. This is where they go into. So this is where I want cool water to flow into. This one is where the exhaust comes out of. This one's where the fuel goes in. And this one is where your engine requests an air intake. These are the basic ports that you'll find on most engines. Now, let's first set up a pipeline 
because that is the way that this game works. It doesn't really work with any sort of crankshaft, at least not currently. Maybe that's going to be developed, and by the time that you're watching this, you think, where the hell's the crankshaft? I'm going to go with the standard pipe angle. Angle this one down. And connect this all the way with the pipes straight to the engine in the back. Or sorry, to the propeller in the back, I should say. Okay, so now the engine can deliver power, but we still miss a few components. First and foremost, coolant. Now the easiest way to get coolant for this engine is to make a small hole in the bottom of the boat. And you can see that um, we can now actually see through the boat. There's the arrow which indicates what the front side of the boat is, that one. For this, I'm going to use two fluid ports, these ones. These allow fluids in and out of a fluid system. It's a bit of a technical description, but what it basically means in this case is I allow water in and I allow water to go out. Again, this one is going to be for the coolant in, so this is going to suck water into the engine, and this is going to put water out of the engine. Again, we need to connect that with the pipes. Fortunately, since we're in mirror mode, they already built them on both ends, and that saves a bit of time. Connect the pipes, and like that. Now, a very easy way to remember which is which is to use the paint tool. That's over here, paint. Change the colors of placed components. I click that, but I'm going to turn off the mirror mode. I don't want the parts to be painted on both ends. This is going to be the hot fluid output. So I'm going to make that red. You just click them and that way I now know that this is the red hot output. This is going to be the cool water intake. So I'm going to make that one blue. Now you might not like the coloring, but it is a very easy way to distinguish which is which and it will help you in later reconfiguring your engine, which undoubtedly you'll be doing. This one over here, I just usually leave white. I don't have a specific color for that. Okay, turn mirror mode back on, turn the paint mode off, and I can put down additional piping. Now I'm going to need fuel. It's pretty standard to have a fuel tank, especially early on in your career, close to the engine. The easier you can make it on yourself, the better. Now I'm going to look for tank. And I only have two of them available. I have one medium fluid tank and I have a small fluid tank. I have four of these in stock and four of these. And after you don't have them in stock anymore, you just need to buy them. I'm going to go with one medium fluid tank. I'm going to place that close by and I need to connect that up to this one. So again, back to the pipes. Pipe angle, turn the mirror mode off. This is critical because I don't need both of these outputs or inputs going to that fuel tank. I just need one, this one. So fuel goes through here, goes between the other two pipes. And now we're gonna go down. And now it's connected. There is, however, one tiny issue we cannot get fuel into this tank. And since I set up this uh, particular game mode to have limited fuel, I need to have a way to fuel it. So I'm going to change this half pipe, this uh, curve. I'm going to replace it with a pipe T piece. This way, I can have another either input or output over there. And if I wanted to connect additional fuel, I could also just um, have another pipe, connect it, etc. So you could have another fuel tank like that. Not the point here. I want to have a way to add fluid to this tank and this to this engine. For that, you're going to need a fluid port. They look like this. It's a bowl or it's a block with a sort of bowl connector on top of it. I'm going to put that down over there and just leave that. Yes, I know it's sticking out of the deck. So be it. Now, Fuel in my paint mode again, just to see which is which, is usually black. Oil is black, diesel is black, so my fuel is also quite black. Connect these pipes, or rather paint the pipes, and now I know what is what. So I know that this connector is there to provide fuel. Okay, 
we still have two pipes that we haven't connected yet. And that is the one for the engine intake, this one, the air intake, and the engine exhaust. Now I want to have the exhaust at the back of the boat. I can already start to finish up this part of the boat. Because I know that the rear is pretty much done. The stern is doing all right. Now I want to have a sort of a small smokestack which comes up from over here. And let's say it moves up to three or four blocks above the boat. So first I'm going to lay a pipe there. This is the exhaust port. I'm going to put it on the side of the boat and move it down. Just close to the deck. There's no particular reason for it. I just think that it is easier to manage and easier to maintain generally. Like that. Add another straight pipe. And sometimes the game allows you to drag these. Sometimes the game is a bit finicky. There we go. You don't even need to have this thing centerpiece. Um, for beauty purposes, you can. And I kind of want to have that. So I'm going to have this thing come up through here. Up, up, up. The problem is, if I now enclose this, there's going to be a little bit of room. I don't like that. So I'm going to remove this piece of the pipe. And I'm going to back, uh, back into the component inventory. And I need the uh, pipe straight enclosed. This is a pipe. And thanks to turning on these directional arrows, you can see which way it's going. So if I turn them off, I have no idea what the orientation of the block is. So turn those things on. And if I do it like that, now I have a pipe going through the deck, but the deck is seemingly intact. All right, make the pipe a little bit longer. There's no real purpose for this other than aesthetics. And you can have well, depending on what you like up here, you can have a fluid port like that. These are the same things that we used to cool the engine. You can see them over there. Or you can have an exhaust. In this case, I'm going to go with an exhaust there. Doesn't matter which you use, but the difference between these two is that this thing lets stuff in and out. This stuff only lets it out. Okay. So now we have our exhaust. Now I just need an intake. This couldn't be easier because I know where my deck is going to be. All that I have to do is make sure that this thing is above the deck so that it can suck in uh, air. This is going to be the deck level. This now everything has or now everything. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this now has everything set up for your basic engine. I haven't added any gearboxes, I haven't added any clutches, nothing like that. That's going to be part of an advanced tutorial for this one as a follow-up. Now I just want you to get going. Now we're going to once again turn on the mirror mode and I'm just going to wrap this stuff up. However, you can see that this is not quite going to be the level of the deck. This is going to be the level of the deck because the engine is sticking out a little bit. So this is the height of the deck. That means that I will have to make some adjustments to my bow because I wasn't quite at that level of height yet, but that's all right. I can add these blocks over here, finish up like that. And before I forget, I have a couple of other colorings for my pipes. Again, turn off the mirror mode because otherwise if I paint this one, I'm also gonna be painting that one. For the exhaust, I usually use a shade of gray, it doesn't really matter what, just so long as it's not black for me, because then you might be confusing it with the oil intake or the diesel intake. This means for me, this is where the exhaust is gonna come out of. And you can paint this all the way up, don't need to, my choice. Then we have this one. This intakes the air, and I usually have that as a sort of, uh, I'm not even sure what you'd call that. This is, for me, providing the uh, breathing part of the engine. Okay, let's finish up here. The only thing that we need to adjust before I do that is the height of this fluid port, or this fluid pipe, really. So, 
the enclosed block, straight one, making sure that the pipe continues on straight down and continue up there. Set the mirror mode back on, finish up the deck. Make sure the deck is entirely closed off. This is what I meant earlier when I said you want a watertight compartment. This is it. The only water that is allowed to go into this boat is the stuff that goes directly from the engine out into the water, red pipe or blue pipe for bringing coolants into the engine. That is all. This provides the floating capacity or the buoyancy of your boat. Now I want to have two blocks as an edge of the boat. There. I want to have two blocks at an angle. So these are the uh, wedge shaped blocks. And of course you can adjust this design any way you see fit. Now I need a way to control the boat because we have propulsion. The prop is down there, but we don't really have a rudder. An easy way to do that is by using the standard rudder. You can also use the fin rudder, but just go with the standard one for now. The standard fin rudder takes a three by three shape and I don't want that fin rudder to be sticking out too much. So I'm going to take nine blocks out of the bottom of the boat and fortunately, it doesn't actually uh, clash with my engine piping. And I'm going to add that rudder over there. In case you're wondering, how do I delete blocks? You press X on your keyboard and it immediately goes to the erase tool. Okay, this one is the rudder. And it shows you that if I give it a plus input, it's going to move to the right. So the rudder is gonna move right. Minus goes to the left. This is only for future reference. You don't really need to do anything with that right now. Now we're going to add a seat, a pilot seat. From here, we're going to control everything insofar as there is anything to control at the moment. There's not a whole lot, really. What I just need to do is have one button. This is a push button. This is important. The push button allows me to start the engine. I also need to have a throttle. This is one of those things that you can move back and forth and make sure that the plus icon is on the front. The way that I have it set up right now, plus goes on the front. I have two set up because I'm in mirror mode. You don't really need to just yet. So I'm going to remove the other one to avoid confusion. Unfortunately, this early on in the campaign, you don't have a way to measure speed. So you don't really need any displays. You don't really need anything to show you how fast you're going because you don't have the sensor to measure it. What we do have is a dial. I want to have one dial for the engine. And I'm going to set that up like this. And the other one goes over here. And this is going to tell me how much fuel I have left. We're gonna hook up the logic systems. This one, and I'm going to use the select tool to select the dial exactly, is going to be the engine RPM. It cannot have a minus value. Engine RPM is always above zero, unless it's stopped. And a max value of 20, because engines have 20 RPM. At least this one does. This one is going to be the fuel. It cannot have a minus or it cannot have a uh, minus one value because there's either going to be fuel in there or there's not. And the max value is going to be 187.5. How the hell do you come up with that number? Um, I know that that's the fuel capacity of this tank currently. Now you're gonna go into logic. This looks a whole lot more intimidating than it is right now. We're gonna take it step by step. This measure over here, this one we used for the engine RPM. It has a backlight feature and it has a value to display. The value to display is going to be how much rotations per minute the engine is making. So I'm going to click here, drag that and connect that to either of the inputs or rather outputs of my engine. This one shows me the temperature. I don't want that. That one shows me the rotations per minute. That's the one that I want. The other dial that we had set up, this one over here, 
is fuel. So value to display goes to the fuel tank to show me exactly how much fuel there is currently in the tank in liters. Next, we still have some other connectors. The rudder rotation means how much is my rudder being rotated. I want that to answer to the A and D key on my keyboard. So I'm going to drag this and hook it up to the, uh, to the few buttons they have over here. This is A and D, W and S, left and right, and up and down. I want it to connect to A and D, like you're steering left and right. That's it. And now we have the push button over here. This one I use to start the engine. So this one just says start engine. I'm going to take that and connect that to this one. Now there is one left, but I'm not going to use that just yet. There is however one part that we haven't quite finalized with the engine. And that is a problem because engines need a way to start. And they need an electrical impulse to do that. So what I'm going to do is add one battery. You get one in stock. Don't lose it because these things are expensive. I'm going to set up one battery. Doesn't need to be in mirror mode because I just need one. And in order to charge the battery, we're going to need a generator. And initially in career, you only get one small generator. So I need to find a way to connect that and you just connect that to the main drive shaft. So I'm going to delete one part of the, uh, the crankshaft here. We're going to go back into pipes, connect a T pipe and try to get that the right way up. And then the small generator goes on top of it. Now we need to hook up again in the logic viewer where the power goes. I want the battery, this one over here to connect or to provide power for the engine. You need to make sure, however, that this battery never dies, because if it dies, then you cannot start your engine back up. Okay. Now, I want that engine, or that battery, to be charged by the engine. This small electric generator is going to be getting, or is going to be providing energy when the engine is running. So this one connects to the battery. I won't really need the rudder unless my engine's going because otherwise I'll be sitting still in the water. So this one connects to the engine. Now we still have a few other connectors and these are the displays as well as the fluid port where we use or we are going to use to connect up the fuel. These generally just connect to your battery. So this one connects here and make sure you hold control as you click the source and then you can click as many connected positions as you like. Otherwise, I'd have to click here, hold it, drag it, release it. Click, hold, drag, release. Holding control as you're clicking the source, you can very easily click whichever connector or whichever current power output you want this to go to. Okay, so now I can start my engine. I cannot, however, control how much power the engine is going to provide other than by using throttle. But we haven't actually set the throttle up, so I need to do that. The throttle that we had over here is going to determine how much power the engine gets. So how much power the engine outputs. This one goes directly to your engine. And now we have a working boat. I'm going to save this as the basic boat because you can barely get more basic than this. We're gonna spawn it in. First, interesting to see if it floats, and it does indeed float. Would I have left one block open, the ship would not float. The ship slowly starts to sink because there is water in this compartment, and that's a problem. So always make sure that you completely close up your or your hull. Okay, now to make sure that I'm a little closer to the fuel pump over there, I'm going to set this boat to spawn closer to the fuel pump. And you do that by using the move tool and you move it to the left. You don't need to move it all the way to the left. So I'm going to have a little bit of space between the uh, 
side of the dock and my boat. If you want to see exactly what that looks like, click here, world view. Now you can see where that thing is going to spawn. I want the uh, fuel port, which is more or less over here, to be sort of aligned with the fuel connector up there. So I'm going to move it like that, and I'm going to move it down. Now I'm going to spawn it in. And now I don't need to do too much to get this connector over to that connector, that one down there. That's where the fuel goes in. You start out with a whole bunch of fuel in this thing, but every time you pump up your boat and then you bring it back to the workshop and you don't take the fuel out, you're going to lose that fuel. One liter of fuel costs one dollar. So you have quite a bit of pricing or quite a bit of um, money in here. Make sure you don't lose it. Okay. I'm going to say I want to pump to the hose. Fortunately, it's not pumping anything just yet. It is just going to pump to a hose if the hose is connected. I'm going to uh, winch the hose out. You can see that the connector is just stuck on the ground, but the hose is coming out. I think that this is about long enough. I can pick up the connector. I can sort of leap slash fall onto the boat and I can connect it here. This hose is now pumping fuel into my fuel tank. And we can see if it's actually doing that, and it is. We are getting fuel. We need to go to 187, and now it's completely full. So now you can just pick it up and sort of just toss it overboard. You don't need to completely winch it in again. That's just going to be tedious. If you have another crew member to do it for you, lovely. Otherwise, don't bother. So our boat's fueled up. Time to get going. One problem, the moment that I turn on the engine, it immediately starts to provide thrust. Because we don't have a gearbox, we don't have a clutch, we don't have anything. But this is just to get you going. Now, as you might know, an engine doesn't really start if you don't provide it with any gas. If you were to go to your car, provided you have a car, and you were to try to start the engine without adding fuel, it's not going to go. So I'm going to set a little bit of throttle, then I'm going to start the engine. You can see that the engine RPM is slowly kicking up to 5, and we are underway. Props moving, rudders moving left and right, and of course the longer you hold it, the further it moves. We're not going at full speed just yet, as we're not at full throttle. If I go to full throttle, the boat's going to speed up significantly. But not just that, my fuel usage will also go up quite significantly. And this thing can turn quite violently, as you can see, but at least we're underway. Now you can go on missions, although there are still some things that you will need to change to this boat in order for that to happen. You can see we have burned through about 7 liters of fuel now, almost 8. One of the things that we still need to do make sure that this boat can go in reverse, because currently it really can't. And that is a bit unhandy if you're building a Coast Guard boat, which might need to maneuver into close quarters. So I'm going to adjust this boat to have an ability to go in, uh, or to go in reverse, but I'm going to do that in the next video. For now, I hope this thing got you going. I hope that this tutorial made sense for you to get started with Stormworks, because there are a few tutorials out there, but it took me quite a while to get to this phase where I could actually build a boat that got underway in advanced. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. If you have a need for additional commentary or additional tutorials, have a look in the description down below and you'll find my tutorial list for Stormworks. This tutorial list is growing and you'll find continuously more tutorials here on how to continue to build your boat. Anyway. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon for more Stormworks videos. Good luck out there rescuing people.